All right, the earnings of the moment, and we're keeping a very close eye on this one then. Nasdaq listed Cognizant continued its stellar run, posting better than expected numbers for the third quarter and raised its full year revenue guidance for the third straight time. And we've got uh, none other than CEO Francisca D'Souza joining us all the way from New York. Uh, Frank, thanks very much for being with us. Uh, and thanks for talking to ET Now here. You did post a strong set of results for the third quarter and also raised guidance for the third consecutive time this year. What secret sauce is helping you go at this pace? Plenty of optimism coming in from your stable. Yeah, you know, we had another strong quarter. And as you said, we raised our guidance for the third time this year on the back of that strong Q3 performance. Um, our Q3 revenues were up 3.3% uh, sequentially, 23.5% year over year. Uh, and we exceeded our guidance in the third quarter by about $45 million. Uh, I think that uh, our outperformance is really driven by three things. Uh, one is that we have a very unique integrated set of capabilities that position us very well to address the current market demand. Uh, the second is that we're winning in digital uh, because we're innovating at scale. Uh, we have uh, a philosophy in the business of reinvesting in the business and that's helping us uh, to win in this new digital era. Uh, and the third thing I would say is that we're helping clients to succeed in their digital transformations because we're able to combine the strengths that we have in digital technologies with uh, optimizing of our clients' legacy environments. You put those three things together and it's enabling Cognizant to win in the marketplace. Right, Frank, you know, some analysts say a 3.3% growth looks subdued for September quarter, which is traditionally a strong quarter for the company. Uh, any factors that contributed to this? You know, um, we feel good about um, the September quarter. 3.3% sequential growth was broad-based across uh, the industry sectors that we serve. Uh, financial services was strong. Um, healthcare was strong. Uh, the only pocket of weakness that we saw in the business was in the communications area, uh, where we saw some impact from the m and activities in that business. Um, so across the board, we feel good about the strength of the business because we're winning in digital and the, bro the growth of the business is broad-based. Right. You know, Frank, given that the second half has always been seasonally weak, how do you feel about the rest of the year uh, uh, right now? You know, um, as I said, uh, we've raised our guidance for the full year and uh, the, uh, the increase in guidance that we provided uh, today was um, more than uh, just the overperformance that we uh, showed in the third quarter. So uh, that says that we are taking guidance up for the full year as a, a result of the fact that we feel good about the demand environment. The fourth quarter for us, the, the December quarter, is always seasonally a, a somewhat slower quarter as we see uh, the retail industry slow down spending in that quarter. Uh, also, this year in particular, uh, we, uh, there's an impact of 3.5% fewer billing days uh, in, the, in the fourth quarter, in the December quarter. Uh, but overall, the fundamentals continue to remain strong in our view, and uh, we feel good about how the business is performing. Frank, your sharp and focus on North America, especially in sectors like banking and financial and the healthcare, has helped you stand out amongst the peers for sure. But should one be concerned a little bit about the lack of diversification hitting you at some point, perhaps sooner than later? Uh, you know, we feel very good about uh, the, uh, our business and growth outside of North America. Of course, North America continues to be a, a pillar of strength for the company, uh, but we're growing nicely in, in, in Europe and um, in, in Asia. In fact, uh, those geographies had uh, solid growth this quarter. And so we continue to uh, diversify the business, make the investments that we need in other parts of the world outside of North America, uh, while at the same time continuing to make investments in North America to solidify our position of strength in North America. You know, it's interesting that when we're going through numbers, did realize that a counterintuitive trend that is playing out is perhaps how companies with greater exposure to discretionary spend are gaining, whereas those uh, really strong in keeping the lights on business, that's business as usual, are really struggling to gain momentum. What is perhaps driving this pattern according to you? You know, uh, this is, there's a clear uh, bifurcation going on in the industry. We see, we've seen this in past technology shifts. You see, we're at, we're, we're at the, the cusp of what is a once in a decade big shift in technology. And this is going to drive a sustained period over the next several years of clients reinvesting in their businesses in technology. And that's why you see in our business a uh, uh, growth in uh, the discretionary spending side of the business. It's because we're helping our clients um, with innovation, with growth, we're helping them with digital. Um, and as a result of that, um, 
you know, our growth in that part of the business is strong. I think what's very important here is to understand that the strength that we have doesn't just come from our strength in digital. It comes from our ability to integrate digital with the core traditional legacy backbones of our clients. And that ability to take the new and integrate it with the old is such a critical uh, element of being successful in today's digital environment. And that's really why we're winning. Right. You know, Frank, in your statement after the results, you said Cognizant is well positioned to capture a disproportionate share of the market. What kind of market share gains are you really looking at in terms of sectors and geographies? Break it down for us. Well, you know, I think it's a broad statement in that we've always said that the operating model at Cognizant is to keep our operating mar margins, our non-GAAP operating margins, in the 19 to 20 percent range and reinvest above that back into the business. And given that we're, we're making that level of reinvestment back into the business, uh, we believe that that should translate and has translated into higher than industry average growth. And the implication of that is that we're taking market share. So we will continue to, that formula is working for us, we'll continue to make the investments, keep our operating margin in that uh, non-GAAP 19 to 20 percent range. Uh, and as a result of that, we continue to expect to post uh, industry-leading growth and take market share. Frank, also in terms of pricing, what trends are you seeing? Uh, because a lot of your rivals have been talking of uh, considerable pricing pressure. Uh, what's, what's the sense that you're getting? Yeah, you know, o overall, uh, we see pricing uh, stable. Uh, we saw the pricing environment was stable again in, in the quarter, and that's what we're witnessing and we're seeing in, in general in the marketplace. Um, while we are seeing some isolated pockets of, of pricing pressure um, and some isolated pockets of some of our competitors um, behaving uh, in a somewhat irrational way, overall, we view the pricing um, uh, environment to be stable. Uh, and that uh, is, is logical given the demand environment that we're seeing and the fact that there's a, a significant demand for higher value services around innovation and growth and digital. Well, if I may shift the focus away from earnings and pricing pressure and all of that really to U.S. elections. I mean, every time there is a U.S. election around the corner, the narrative really changes to a focus on immigration policies, the H-1B visas and all of that. As someone who's, who's on the ground there and you also have your skin in the game, how do you see that sentiment panning out this time around? Do tech companies have less reason to fear because the rhetoric has been done to death perhaps? Look, I think there's a rich dialogue that's going on right now um, uh, around the topic of immigration, uh, all, all aspects of the immigration dialogue. Uh, and we welcome that dialogue. I think that having a good dialogue um, uh, on the topic of immigration is, is healthy for the United States. Uh, we are supporters of good, healthy immigration reform, good, healthy immigration policy for the United States. We're participating actively in that, in that dialogue. Um, I think that um, the, the reality is that um, as the world becomes more technology intensive, as businesses around the world and in the United States look to gain competitive advantage from technology, uh, the ability for the United States as a country to have access to the best talent in the world and to have that talent support the businesses in the United States so that they can be the most competitive that they can be is critically important. It's a policy issue for the United States and we at Cognizant support good immigration policy that furthers that objective. All right, so from a pricky issue in the U.S. to a pricky, tricky issue here in India, and finally, as one of India's most successful exports to the tech world, how do you view the developments back home in the country in the last few weeks? Has the Indian narrative really changed from one of development to intolerance and communalism? I would say that um, uh, the, the world is getting uh, more technology intensive across the board. Governments, businesses um, uh, are becoming more... Uh, societies are becoming more technology intensive, not less technology intensive. And as a result of that, uh, I would say that the demand for technology, uh, the demand for technology, skills, capabilities, talent, uh, and fundamental uh, technology has never been stronger. Uh, as a result of that, I feel very optimistic about uh, our industry, uh, and I feel very strongly that uh, the, the strong capability that India has in terms of a talent pool uh, we'll continue to see, um, uh, see it in good stead. Frank, always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much for joining us straight from uh, New York, uh, uh, exclusively right here on ET Now. Uh, let's... Thank you very much for having me.
Thanks for that. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.